Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome all of you to Emmanuel on this beautiful Confirmation Sunday. And we pray that the Lord will bless us as we hear God's word and as we celebrate God's goodness. Um, as I said, this is Confirmation Sunday. And we have 12 junior, junior catechumens who will be confirmed during this service. So uh, we wish them God's richest blessings. Uh, they're a little bit nervous, but they'll do a great job. I'm sure of it. So welcome to our catechumens and all their families. Um, also, uh, this is the last weekend for our Camp Warburg collection. Um, next week, we'll begin a collection for the whole food pantry. Uh, they're needing all kinds of food, and that will last during May and June. Uh, next Sunday, we also have a congregational meeting after the 1015 service. This is a very important meeting. We have election of officers, and we'll talk about using some money uh, that was left over after a request, so please keep that in mind. Uh, our young people are hosting a plant sale that's going to be May the 10th and 11th after all the services, and there are all kinds of plants, so uh, please keep that in mind. And I think that's it for announcements, so let's stand up and greet one another, and please remain standing for the opening hand.
Our service continues on page two in your service folder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To a living hope. By God's power, we are being guarded through faith for our salvation ready to be revealed for the last time. Leave it up for a few seconds. Put it back. Keep it in. Father of all mercy and grace, we confess to you our sins of body, mind, and spirit, and love. We readily acknowledge with our minds.
morning of Easter is from Acts chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Judas rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, Keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, it will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching to Jesus as the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested geniusness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord.
my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in this day. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now tell the world and one another what we believe to be as Christian people in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Mayor of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, the God of God made, being of one substance with the Father, God in whom all things were made.
The text for today's message is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15. Allow me to read this. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building on it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, a straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. This is our text. Dear friends in Christ, today's text was the epistle lesson for the seventh Sunday after Epiphany. When I read those verses to myself and to the congregation nine weeks ago, it seemed to me that this passage would make a great sermon text for Confirmation Sunday. In our text, Paul talks about building our lives and church on the foundation of Jesus Christ. In other words, our joy and purpose in life should come from our relationship with Jesus. And everything in the church should focus on Jesus and what he's done for our salvation. So I made a mental note to use this text as my sermon text for confirmation. Now, I usually have to write stuff down to remember it. You know, pick up some mail, feed the dog, buy a present for my wife for our anniversary. <laughs> this time I remembered without writing it down. This time the mental note stuck. This really is a good text for Confirmation Sunday. You see, Confirmation isn't a graduation. No. It marks the beginning of a deeper involvement in the Church of Jesus for our young confirmators. From now on, you'll be looked upon as people who support the church, as people who provide leadership and use their time, talents, and money to do the work of the Lord. And I think you've grown and matured tremendously these past few years. You've grown physically. Most of you are taller than me now. And you can sure you are well acquainted with the Bible and the catechism. You know God better. And so, it's very appropriate for me to ask you today, what kind of church will you build? What will you use? What kind of materials will you use to build on the foundation of Jesus Christ? In the Lutheran church, there's a tendency to think that the pastor and pastor alone builds the local congregation. Not long ago, I asked a member of a different congregation what he wants in a pastor. He replied, I want a pastor who will make this church grow. I pointed out that that's a team effort. The pastor leads, people follow. The members and the pastor need to be immersed in God's word. They all need to be open to new kinds of people. It's a team effort. And he looked at me like I was from outer space. Now don't get me wrong. The pastor is an important spiritual leader. He imparts a vision of what the congregation should be and fills members up with the Word of God. He equips them for service by showing people Jesus. But the work of the congregation, the work of building upon the foundation of Jesus Christ, is a team effort. Think about it. The pastor is the only one involved in celebrating a worship service. Yes, I preach. But we have a liturgist, we have acolytes, we have servers, we have 
choir members, we have bell ringers, we have musician, musicians, we have acolytes, we have people who clean up the church, we have people who repair the church. I could go on and on. My point is, everyone builds the church, not just the pastor. In our text, Paul doesn't speak about a pastor building on the foundation of Jesus Christ. He talks about anyone. Anyone is universal. He's talking about believing men and women doing the work of the Lord in the local church. Let me read a portion of the text once more. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, hay, wood, straw, each one's work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to life. It will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If what he built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. So, let me ask you again. What kind of church will you build? What kind of materials will you use to build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ? Will it be a house of gold? A house of wood? Or a house of straw? In our day and age, people don't think very much about working together to build a church. We're very individualistic in our culture. We focus on personal happiness and personal fulfillment. Take a look at the advertisements on TV and in magazines. They're all about being the best, having the best, having personal satisfaction. Even faith is about personal satisfaction. It's just me and my God. God is helping me be the best me that I can be. And it's true that faith is a personal thing. I want so much for you confirmants to grow in your knowledge of Jesus, to get closer and closer to Him, to grow in your love of Jesus. I want that for you throughout your life. But being a Christian also means living in community. We're God's family. We work together, pray together, play together, worship together. We're interconnected. And together, we build on the foundation of Jesus Christ. The question is, what will we build? What kind of church will you build? Let's take a look at the church of straw. This church is active. It's always doing something. Its programs always work. It's structured flawlessly from elder to greeter. Everyone has a job description. Look in the church's bulletin, and you'll find a calendar that's jam-packed. Each Sunday school teacher has an aide and a file on the background of each child in class. This church has a picnic after vacation Bible school that would put six flags to change. The pastor preaches nice sermons. They're not boring. He offers helpful hints for everyday life. He avoids negativism. And all this activity is fine, except for one thing. The focus isn't on Jesus Christ and the Word of God. These activities aren't done out of love for Christ. They're not done for the salvation of souls. Members are anxious to build a super church, one the whole community can admire. The church is looked upon as a fast growing corporation rather than an oasis where people can meet Jesus, experience his love, and grow in God's work. Jesus is in this church, it's just hard to find it. And so Satan comes and huffs and huffs and blows this church down. You see, the church isn't firmly anchored in the foundation of Jesus Christ.
Then there's the Church of Sticks. It's a little stronger. It has Bible studies at Sunday school. The preaching is Christ-centered and based on the Bible. People want to be faithful to God's Word. They're very conscientious about not compromising Christian values and teaching. But this congregation has forgotten its mission. This church doesn't want to be involved with people and their messy lives. When the pastor asks members to join his visitation team or take a man to the training, they look at him like he's crazy. And although members say, oh, the young people, the young people are the future of our church. No one wants to work with the young people. They don't want to be involved in youth programs. They balk at spending money on youth events and Christian education. And mission trips, outreach efforts. Forget it. According to church members, people know where our church is. We're right on the corner. This church has a great message. The members understand the gospel. They just have a hard time getting that message out. Finally, there's the church that's built of substantial stuff. The outside of this church may be magnificent, or it may be as humble as can be. You see, what goes on inside of the church is what really counts. The whole counsel of God is taught here, both law and gospel. Nothing is added to or taken away from the word of God. Sin is quietly and honestly called sin. Jesus Christ, crucified and risen from the dead, is shared as the savior of the world, as the solution to man's problems. There's an enthusiasm for worship here. People love to come together to sing God's praises and hear God's word and receive Christ's body and blood in the Lord's Supper. They celebrate baptism. Members pray for one another and present their offerings cheerfully, be it electronically or in the plant. <coughs> There's a hunger for God's word here. Members know that it takes more than a sermon once a week to really learn the Word of God. And so there are small group Bible studies and large group Bible studies and individual study of God's Word. People have devotions at home because they know receiving God's Word isn't just a Sunday thing. It's an everyday thing. People here love each other. Loving each other isn't just a slogan or a ruse for getting publicity. People bear one another's burdens. They rejoice with those who rejoice, and they mourn with those who mourn. Well, members sometimes disagree. Sometimes they hurt one another very badly. But they come together and forgive one another and move forward to do the Lord's work. This church moves out of the community and the rest of the world to alleviate human suffering and to share the gospel of Jesus. Again, not as a slogan, not as a ruse for getting publicity. It's done out of love for Jesus and love for other people. In short, you see love for Jesus, love for God's word, and love for others in this church. Faith may come, huff and puff and blow all he wants. This church will stand. My young brothers and sisters, you and I and all Christians are to build on the foundation of Jesus Christ with substantial stuff. Someone might ask, well, what will happen if we build with inferior materials? What if our church isn't all that strong? If that's the case, there is forgiveness from God. God won't turn his back on us. Because of Jesus, God is our Abba, Father. Paul even 
Paul says so in our text. He says, if we blow it, we'll suffer loss. Our work will have been in vain. But we won't be lost. We're securely in God's hand. Still, strive to build a strong church. Build a church with substantial stuff. Jesus deserves it. He made us and gave us all to buy us back. He was born in that stable, grew up, died on the criminal's cross, and rose again to redeem us from sin, death, and the devil. He deserves our very best. And those who don't know our Savior, they need a strong church. They don't need a social club. They don't need a church that doesn't care for people. They need a house where they can meet Jesus and be strengthened in their faith. They need an oasis where they can bring the water of life. I once asked a friend of mine why a strong faith was so important to him. He always talked about his need for a strong faith. He replied, I need a strong faith so the devil won't lead me astray and so I can lead others to Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to enjoy God's peace and the assurance of heaven all my days and I want to share that with others. Great answer. That's what I want for you, my young brothers and sisters in Christ, the confirmation class of 2014. I want you to have a strong faith so that you have the assurance of heaven and God's peace all your days. I want you to have a strong faith so that you need strong leaders, effective servants of the Lord Jesus courageous builders of the Church of Christ. So, be in God's Word. Take the Lord's Supper whenever it's offered. Pray. Remember your baptism. Go and build Christ's Church, knowing that Jesus is by your side, loving you and guiding you. Go knowing that God's Holy Spirit will empower you and bring to remembrance all that Jesus said, all that Jesus did for you. Go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.
few of our catechists will be confirmed with something. Grant them boldness as they confess your holy name and direct them in every aspect of their lives. Cause them to grow in faith and in their love for Jesus, serving and praising you all their days. O Lord our God, Lord God, the leaders of our earthly societies are appointed by your authority to serve at your pleasure. Grant wisdom to all government officials that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives with all honesty. O Lord our God, Lord God, be near to the sick, the suffering, the injured, and the dying. Especially be with Michael and Marine, Millie, Nancy, Telka, with Joy, Doris, Nina, Marine, Mary, Quinn, Ed, Paul, Virginia, Nina, Darlene, and Janet. Come to them with words of peace. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Grant that through suffering their faith may be found genuine, resulting in praise and glory and honor and revelation of Jesus Christ. O Lord our God, Lord God, Christ Jesus is risen from the grave. This gives us a sure and certain hope that all who have died in the faith will perish. You will raise to life again on the last day. Grant that we too may run our course with faith and be raised with all your saints to life everlasting in the eternal kingdom of Christ. O Lord our God, bless you. For you and those who are in the military who serve to protect us and our nation, especially those connected with Emmanuel. You with Andrew, Dusty, Dan, Jared, Lucas, Andrew, Alicia, Dustin, Lauren, Aaron, and John. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray that you would continue to be with Jack, Randy, and Lisa. Thank you that they are connected with Emmanuel. Please continue to bless our proclamation of the love that you have for us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for the gift of marriage and meeting. Celebrate with Howard and Norma and Gary and Barbara. Many years of blessing. We pray that you would continue to bless their love and as it is founded in the love that you have for us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, be with those who mourn, especially the family of Joel. That they would be reminded of your resurrection cause to be hopeful for the resurrection to come. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for the workers that you have called to your heart. We pray that you would bless those who are to be called into pastoral ministry this week. Bless those congregations and the people that they would be able to share in your love. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we receive our offering.
customs we have here at Emanuel is allowing our young catechumens to choose their own confirmation verse, and then they write an essay on that verse and read it during a church service. Uh, they did that last week. They read their essays. Uh, but today I'd like them to stand up, face the congregation, and then recite their confirmation verse once more. So, My confirmation verse is Luke 137, for nothing is impossible with God. My confirmation verse is Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. My confirmation verse is 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Jesus came into this world to save sinners. My confirmation verse is Matthew 19, verse 26. Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but God all things are possible. My confirmation verse is John chapter 14, verse 1. Not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. To you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism, 
An answer, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil in all his works and all his way? If so, answer, yes, I renounce them. Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty.
Paul, the Father in heaven for Jesus' sake, renew and increase in thee the gift of the Holy Spirit, to thy strengthening in faith, to thy growth in grace, to thy patience in suffering, and to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Tyler Irvin, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Spencer Kepler, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. Spencer, God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Give thee his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification and the fear of God. Caitlin Mankey, keep your lives free from the love of money. And be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you.
God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, make thee mature, establish, strengthen, and settle thee, and keep thee through faith into eternal life. Vigil lead shining. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. sanctify thee holy, and may thy whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to him, 
and he will make your path straight.
when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave them, saying, All of you, drink of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace from the Lord be with you always.
preserve you in the true faith of the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Blessed be your name, Lord God Almighty, for you have again fed us with the true body and precious blood of Christ Jesus our Lord. He died and rose once for all, and through this meal your saving work among us continues. Here, to forgive our sins, strengthen our faith, give courage to our love, and enliven our hope. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 727. Ooh.